Hey everyone, in this video we're going to talk about Docker files and containerizing our Spring Boot application. So in one of my previous videos, I made a super simple basic Spring Boot application. It had a health endpoint and it was able to do some routing based on Spring Cloud Gateway. Now that's not really important for this video. This video is about um, containerizing a Spring Boot project, but if you don't have an existing project, it might be beneficial just to go and look at that video to see how we made it and what it does. But if you have an existing Spring Boot application and you're just looking for a really simple way to containerize it, that's what you're going to get from this video. Okay, the first thing we need to do is in the root of your project, you're going to want to create a Docker file. Make sure it has the same uh, casing, so a capital D. The rest of the letters are small. It's all together, one word. And if you're using something like IntelliJ, it should pop up here with a little Docker icon. So it's pretty straightforward to notice that it is indeed a Docker file. Now, once you create that Docker file, there's a couple of things you need to do. The first thing is you need to define what it needs to run. So if it's a Spring Boot app, you're going to be using, you know, Java or Kotlin or Scala or some language like that. Those are all built on JDKs, so you'll need a JDK. Now, my application here, if we look in the palm and we have a look for Java, you can see that it uses Java version 17. So that's the JDK version that I'm using. If you're using Java 8 or something like that, then just replace this with 8 or 21 or whatever you're using. But I'm using Java 17, so that's what we're going with. Then you need to set your working directory in the container. So this, this could be anything. You could change this to something else if you want, if you want to call it something other than app. But it's kind of the convention to use app, so that's what I'm using. Then the next step is to copy your jar. So this would be the, the jar that's in your in your source code, usually in your target folder. And it could have, you know, and the name of your application, usually followed by a version number and a snapshot.jar. So it Basically, all the applications follow this standard. The only thing that you will be changing for this line is this bit here, most likely. But if you want to just go into your target folder and just copy this one here and paste it in there, then you're going to expose it on a given port. So we're just going to go with 8080. That's what we're using. And then you need to actually run the application. So uh, you can see we're using this app.jar here, just kind of as a, an alias. So once we've got that Docker file set up, we've got all our, our commands in here, we need to go and build it. So to go and build it, it's quite simple. We just go docker build minus t, and then you have to name it something. So this could be like, blah, blah, blah. But for me, I just called it temp. Then you have a space and put a little dot in here. That just says that the Docker file is in the current directory. So make sure wherever you are in the command line that you are actually uh, within the Docker folder. So if I do like a PWD, uh, you can see where I am. And then if I do an LS, you can see that my Docker file is here. Otherwise, this this dot here, it won't work. You'd have to specify exactly where it is. So just navigate to where your Docker file is, and the dot will work. So we're going to hit Enter on that. As you can see, it's starting to go through the commands within our Docker file, and it's starting to create our image. So it has created the image. For you, it might take a little bit longer. The first time I ran this, it took a while to, to get this image here downloaded. Not too long, just you know, 
a minute or two. And then once you've done that command, let's do a Docker PS, uh, sorry, let's do a Docker images. And if you do a Docker images, you can see I have two images here. You can ignore this Postgres one. That's just one I had from yeah, earlier. It's not related to this project, but this is the one we're interested in here. So this is the the temp because that's what we that's what we named it up above. So if you're following along with me, you'll have one with the exact same name. Now the next thing you want to do is you want to go and actually run this container, or sorry, you want to run um this image that you have, and that will create a Docker container. So to do that. You just have docker run and then you do dash p that specifies the port and 55 is just a random number i picked you know it could have it could have been anything and then 8080 is the port that it's mapped to so the way to think of it is the first port that you have here this is going to be the port that you're going to hit on your machine to actually get into the container, which is running on port 8080. So let's go and hit that. And give that a second or two. You can see it's starting to starting to spin up. And I'm going to open up a new terminal here. And I'm going to do Docker PS. So this should show me the containers that I have running. And you can see 17 seconds ago, we've got this new one. So if I want to go and actually hit this, I'll need to go into my browser or somewhere. So if you were to watch my previous video, we ran this application by you know, going up here, hitting the play button. We went to our browser on port 8080 and we were able to see stuff. Uh, I deliberately didn't use port 8080 this time because I wanted to show you how it's different. Now you could use port 8080 both here and here for to run on your local and to run within your container. But as I said, I just wanted to show you that it doesn't have to be the same and it still works. So if I get my web browser, you can see I've got localhost here. If I was to put in 8080 hit enter i'd get nothing well we've got a we've got go at the end but yeah it wouldn't work because it's not running on port 8080 we need to put in 5555 and now you can see we've got this error that's what we expect at least we know we're getting this error page because there's something running on this port so our application does routing if you didn't watch the previous video. So if we put in, uh, we'll do Salesforce actually. If we put in SF, it brings us to a Salesforce page. And as you can see, there we go, there's Salesforce. Well, I hope you've got something from the video and you know a little bit more about how to containerize your application and how to get that running on your local machine and how the port that you hit in your local machine can be different to the one that's actually running within the container.